Today we'll finally figure out what all of those letters and numbers mean. Codex in Sony cameras dissected. Let's go! What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On channel. And recently I found out that I don't have a proper uh, kind of dissection of those codec and formats. So basically what a codec is, it's a format of compressing a file into a more manageable size so you can work with it on a tiny camera or on your computer later because if you're not compressing the footage, it'll have like humongous file sizes, we don't need those. And we have a ton of different types of compressions, different uh, advantages and disadvantages to different types of compression, so we'll go through all of those and I'll tell you all the pros and cons of each of all. So guys, now it's time to walk through those codecs. We'll hit right here, file format, and you see different names and they can be really irritating for the first time when you don't know what it all means. So let's start off from the top part. We have here the XAVC HS4K. You'll see XAVC-S everywhere, in each and every point. So the XAVC-S is a codec made by Sony. It's a, a format of converting the files, of compressing the files. So it doesn't uh, really matter anything for you, just the naming of the Sony compression system. So we have the S and the HS. The HS is the H.265 codec. It's a more modern codec, but guys, it has more compression and it means that it's more heavy for your computer. When you hit it, you get this uh, message that you have to play back it on the computer that supports XAVC HS or H.265 codec and that you'll have some struggles if your machine doesn't support it properly. For example, M1, M2, M3, Apple computers, they do support it natively, so no issues here. Some new Windows computers also do support H.265, it's okay. So basically we had H.264 compression system and imagine like an A4 sheet of paper and you can fold it once and it'll be an H.264 codec, but if you fold it like four times, you'll have the H.265 compression. So you'll have exactly the same sheet of paper, A4, but kind of folded multiple times in different ways. So the H.265 weighs less in terms of megabits, megabytes, but it has uh, exactly the same amount of information. That is why it's more efficient. It's even called the high efficiency codec as well. But guys, you will have uh, more struggles with your computer if it doesn't natively support it, as I said. So all in all, in H.265, we have not a lot of options in terms of frame rates. For example, I'm in the PAL region and I have only the 50 frames per second and 100 frames per second, but not 25 FPS, which is a bummer. And I would love to have 25 FPS as well, but Sony for some reason doesn't add this into the H.265 codec. Now here we have the record settings. We have different options. For example, you have your megabits per second, 200 megabits per second, not megabytes. If we hit the trash can, you'll see the lower, the smaller B letter after the capital M letter. It means megabits. For example, 100 megabits per second is 12 and a half megabytes per second. So those are not megabytes, those are megabits. Then we have the 422, it's the color sampling rating or the uh, Subdiscretization, if there is a word. So it basically means how many color information, how much color information you have in each pixel. But basically, guys, you have 422 and 420 uh, rates, and both are okay for YouTube stuff, for most filmmaking stuff, for weddings, whatever. You'll need 422 or 4444 in some codecs, but not on the Sony camera. For example, on industrial cinema cameras, you'll see 4444 compression you'll have to use it for green screen and for VFX, but for the regular scenarios, it's more than fine with 422 or 420. And right here, you can also see the 10-bit. So basically, 10-bit contains 1 billion colors in your image and 8-bit contains around uh, 16 million colors, if I'm not mistaken. So I do prefer filming in 10 bit. So guys, right here, you can see different bit rates like 200, 150 megabits per second, 100 megabits per second, then 422 10 bit or 420 10 bit. You'll be more than fine with any of those. But as a rule of thumb, if you have bigger bit rate, you'll have more information to work with. But if you are planning to put it on YouTube or somewhere else, like on a wedding day, you can get away with a smaller bit rate and you'll be more than fine. For me, 100 megabit per second, 4 to 2 10 bit is a sweet spot if I shoot in 4K 50 frames per second. So the next codec we have is the XAVC-S 4K. 
That's an H.264 format, so it has less compression, but file sizes are a bit bigger. But all in all, this codec is super versatile, and if I pick this one up, I'll have all the frame rates I need, 25, 50, 100, and if I go into the NTSC format, I'll have 24, 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. But guys, the bit rates are also getting a bit higher. As you can tell, we have the 8-bit version. Don't choose this one if your camera does shoot 10 bits, I do suggest picking 10 bits because you'll have more color information and you have a bit like two times a larger file size with this codec but it's a very nice and efficient codec and really my computer is not struggling with any of those but if your computer is a bit um, not that modern and you'll have uh, some issues with H.265 you'll be more than fine with H.264 XAVCS format. So also here we have the HD version, it's exactly the same but in 1080p and then we'll have the SI version. So the SI is an all intra codec. It means that each and every frame is being processed separately. Whereas on the S and on the HS you'll have every 5 to 10 frames processed and then the same processing technology will be applied for the next 5 to 10 frames and then the next frame is processed and then applied so this means it has a bit more compression artifacts if you film something very uh, rapid like sports like i don't know a fountain a waterfall or something like this but it's more than fine to shoot in an long GOP format as the S and HS and if you really need the finest detail the biggest bitrate etc you can pick the SI codec all intro it'll have huge file sizes and it will require you to use the V90 SD card or the CF Express type A cards and right now I have my V60 card inserted which I use on a daily basis I don't film in SI codec at all because the file sizes are simply huge and it's very expensive to film in this codec because I have to buy bigger cars, bigger capacity and also I have to buy bigger SSDs and I'm really running out of storage pretty frequently so I don't shoot in those but if you do need you can. Uh, we'll check it out with a faster card, of course, later on in the video. So basically, guys, all you need to know is that H.264 is easier for your computer on the editing process and has bigger file sizes. H.265 has smaller file sizes and a bit heavier on your computer. You can see the bit rate right here. You can see the color depth information and the uh, bit depth. That's all. So what is the best SD card bang for the buck? I would say that for the most people you'll be happy with a V60 card and with 256 gigs because 128 is really running out pretty fast, 256 is okay and the V60 allows you to film in a lot of different codecs and you'll still have pretty cheap price for those. If you really want you can buy the V90 to record in H.264 XAVC S i codec which has pretty big file sizes or you can pick the cf express type a cards which are a bit more expensive and you'll need a separate card reader to get the best speeds in terms of transferring your footage from the sd card not as the cf express type a card to your computer you can also transfer it via your camera with a cord but you'll have very slow speeds sorry guys it's been very cold outside it's september time so I had to go inside. So guys, you heard me saying V60 card, but what does it mean V60 or V30 or V90? It means that your SD card will sustainably have the speed of 30 megabytes per second, not megabits, but megabytes per second. Uh, if it's a V30 card, V60 will have 60 megabytes per second sustained uh, recording speed. And also V90 will have 90 megabytes per second of sustained recording in video mode. Just for the reference, 90 megabytes is around 800 megabits per second. So right here you can see that we have 200 megabits per second, the small b letter, but the V90 card will have up to 800 megabits per second of sustained performance. And guys, right here I have a new cards for review. They are made by a brand called Exosend. Pretty budget ones, but really good ones. So we have the V90 SD card and also the CF Express Type A card with 900 megabytes per second of read speed and 800 megabytes per second of write speed. So right now, guys, I have inserted the Exosend V90 card into my FX30, 128 gigs. And as you can tell, we have one hour and five minutes of record time for this SD card in XAVC SI codec. If we go into XAVC S 4K, 
and we hit 25 frames per second, we'll have one hour and 53 minutes, which is nice. And if we go into HS and we'll start recording in 50 frames per second and we have 100 megabits per second speed, we'll have two hours and 30 minutes of record time, which is not bad for 128 gigs. And keep in mind, guys, that this is the UHS-2 SD card. It has two rows of contacts on the back of the card. But guys, if you want to use the S and Q mode, slow and quick motion, if you want to look at your footage slowed down in camera and you record in XAVC SI or Intra codec, you will have to use the CF Express Type A card because V90 is not enough for this big of a big trade. And right now, guys, I have inserted the CF Express Type A 480 gigabyte card by Exascent. And as you can tell, we have more than four hours of record time in XAVC SI all intra codec in uh, 25 FPS. If we go into 50 FPS, we'll have about two hours of record time for one CF Express Type A card. Exascent. What is it? <laughs> What's the brand? Basically, Exascent is a very popular brand in Hollywood and with those SSDs by Exascent, they've been recording those feature films, including The Green Book, one of my favorite movies of all time. So you can see all of those feature films right here and they are all shot with the SSDs by Exascent. So this brand is pretty reliable and they have a ton of different products. So let me tell you a few words about the lineup. So they have the micro SD cards at up to V30 speeds and up to one terabyte of size for a micro SD card. They have the SD cards V30, V60, V90 at up to 512 gigs. Also the CF Express Type A up to 480 gigabytes or maybe even 900 something, I'm not sure, but I do have the 480 gig version in here in my camera. They also have the CF Express Type B cards for up to two terabytes and C fast cards up to one terabyte. You can also purchase the card reader with up to 10 gigabit per second speeds. And they also have 2.5 inch SSDs at up to 15 terabytes. So a pretty huge number. I'll leave a link below to this company so you can purchase those cards because they are really reliable and have pretty big and different uh, sizes of the cards, but still very affordable price. So guys, I hope you'll have no issues with the Sony cameras and their codecs. So if you have any further questions, please let me know down below. And once again, guys, if you do need a good SD card for your Sony camera, I do suggest using the V60 cards because it's the best bang for a buck kind of uh, compromise in terms of the image quality and file sizes, in my opinion. And you'll be able to record in XAVC S and XAVC HS in almost all the frame rates that you need. But if you do want to purchase the CF Express Type A cards, you'd better purchase a separate card reader to be able to fastly drop the footage to your computer or dump the footage to your computer. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, smash the like and subscribe buttons if you did enjoy this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.